to the TVM preview for the Cenebet Geelong Cup, an intriguing race full of internationals as we count down towards it and then where it might lead us to. Adrian Dunn, a field of seven for the uh, Geelong Cup, but what a beauty. Well, look, there's only seven, Bruce, but it is an outstanding field. We've got three French horses, and as we know, French horses come to Australia and just win. Interesting thing will be what comes out of the race, uh, not just the race itself, but... The strength of the race will be determined the penalty for Greg Carpenter to read the Melbourne Cup because we know many of these are... Let's go through them. Lucky Day is horse number one is safe. Yes. 15 and safe. Attack the Boistron in and safe. Yes. Brigant uh, number 30 on the current order of entry. Well, that's a bit of a borderline now, Bruce, because now that Glenn Cadam goals back in the Cup mix, there's not too many horses that are out of the Cup at this stage outside uh, Managa uh, and uh, Seville. Well, obviously, that means Gatewood and exceptionally need to win and need a bit of luck. Well, not only do they need to win a bit of luck, but they need to get a decent penalty. They probably need to get a one and a half or even a two kg penalty. And I'm not sure unless they win by four or five lengths in a small field if they're going to get that. Let's have a look at the market for Centibet. They're the sponsors of the Geelong Cup. And since the first markets went up on this, they went up pre-post. It's been a one-way ticket the way of Brigant and went up $6 in some markets, four probably in the in the main money. It's been a one-way street. Well, there's a huge boom in this horse and there's a huge boom in this horse for a good reason because um, he has got good form through Dun uh, Dunedin, who he beat uh, in a Group 2 race uh, but it was 18 months ago, and if he happens to get into the cup field, he meets him six kilos better. And you're going to see names Andre Fab, legendary French trainer, and Umberto Raspoli. Sounds like he's going to sing a couple of belting tunes late after the, after the race, but he's a great, great jockey. Look, he's, he's a, a two-time uh, Italian champion jockey. Uh, he doesn't arrive until uh, the, you know, virtually the Cup Eve, and he flies out the next uh, the same night. So, look, he's here for a hit-run hit run visit, but this horse has got really good form. Let's go through the form with you, Adrian. Look at some key replays. Number one, Malucky Day, safe for the Please Melbourne Cup. That'll be his target. Can he win this? Let's go back to the uh, Bart Cummings at Flemington. Sky Raider first into the straight now, down towards the 400. Sky Raider by two, Realia and Dame Clear. Norski under some pressure. Here's Tamby starting to work home strongly. Sky Raider at the 300 has been tackled. Dame Clear, but she wants to lay in behind him, and Tanby winds up strongly now at the 200. And Oliver gives Tanby full bore. He raced up to join Sky Raider. Dame Clear, Malucky Day starting to come. Tanby at the 100, only narrowly from Sky Raider. Dame Clear, Malucky Day still coming, but Tanby has all the momentum. And Tanby wins by a length. Malucky Day, a cracking run. Dame Claire and. Look, was Adrian very good there. Didn't have the rest of luck. Malucky Day ticking over nicely. Look, I think um, you know, there's a, obviously a huge boom on the internationals, but I think this could be Malucky Day's race. He's coming to his best form. This is 2400 metres, which is going to suit him really well. Had no luck in the Bart Cummings. Got to line really strongly. Uh, he's a definite chance. He's a chance on Wednesday. He's a chance on the first Tuesday because he ran second in the best of the Melbourne Cups we've seen. Uh, being home, so you think, won by American. Yeah, look, uh, I think that uh, uh, John Hawkes has had this horse ticking along nicely. Came back from pneumonia. Um, look, expect a really good showing for him. I think he's right in the mix. OK, let's look at the first thing the Nationals here. Attack the bush. And watch this replay. Now, you'll see some horses here, you know. Shawadi runs third, and Brigant, not the best of Brigant here, running six, but horse in pink colours, grey horse. Watch him dive through late here. This is Tack the Bush. Le sprint final qui va maintenant être lancé avec Lost Christianos qui vient en troisième position. Tack de Boitron également qui vient. Brigantin n'a pas le passage que décor. Shawadi qui patiente encore. Et Mistago maintenant qui est décalé par son partenaire, Grégory Benoît. Alors que Warrior Joueur s'est accidenté. C'est le numéro 6, Vadamar, qui est le meilleur attaqué par Lost Christianos avec la corde tag de Boitron qui n'a pas l'ouverture quand même il contrarie Chawardi Miss Lago qui se rapproche à l'extérieur devant Brigantin à 200 mètres du but c'est toujours Vadamar le favori qui est le meilleur sur Chawardi Miss Lago tag de Boitron qui passe à l'attaque maintenant avec le numéro 6 Vadamar qui est le meilleur à 100 mètres du but avec qui est attaqué par tag de Boitron qui a trouvé le passage tag de Boitron Vadamar à la lutte passage du bouton photographie c'est une question de balancier entre le 5 tag de Boitron et le 6 Vadamar There's that forms tying in, but I like the way he tacked the line there, right? Didn't tack the Boistron. Look, uh, tack the Boistron was a remarkable run. It looked like he was going to be, you know, finish up in the, in the uh, back end. Uh, picked himself back up again and really hit the line hard. The only query I've got about him, Bruce, is that his best form is on rain affected track. He won a race at a place called St Cloud where they, he ran 20 seconds slower than they take to run the Melbourne Cup, and that was over a shorter distance. So uh, if it happens to rain, uh, he's a absolute duck in the wet, but. Um, a little query about him uh, on top of the ground. Okay, let's talk about three Brigant. You saw there, not the best of him, but his form ties in. He ran second his last start to Joshua Tree, and this horse then went to Can Can International, won, won there. To, so the form's strong. And also third was Shuadi, who we saw come out and win the Herbert Power. Um, the only knock on him, I suppose, is uh, he hasn't won since uh, he beat Dunedin back in uh, uh, May 2011. Yeah, 
Yeah, obviously the, the target was originally going to run the Caulfield Cup, but they said we want the jockey to ride in both races, so Geelong Cup fits. Rispoli, of course, he went. To, he was based in Japan. And he went to Hong Kong and won the QE2 Cup this year. And uh, I, I think he rode in uh, France on Friday and Italy on uh, Saturday. So look, he's uh, a really a global jockey. Uh, gets here, I said, on the eve of the race, and leaves uh, ten hours later. Well, amazing, he's uh, actually doing doing riding for Mikel de Zengler. Yeah, gets, look, uh, and he won a Group One on um, Art Day on him. So uh, for uh, Mikel, so yeah, look, uh, uh, certainly don't be put off by Umberto Rispoli. Let's have a look at uh, four Gatewood and five exceptionally, of course, exceptionally ran in the Cup through uh, two years ago, exceptionally finishing third back in 2010. But we'll go back to the Herbert Power here, and uh, this is a tale of woe for Gatewood in the OTI colours, and exceptionally charges late to get third. Sweep around the turn, Gatewood must have got shuffled back. He's about third, last into the straight, where I'm Jake led by two. Einstein's in the clear. Then came uh, B and Mick, excluded's coming on. Here's Shawadi coming right down the outside now. Einstein raced up, but excluded, and Shawadi are closing out wide. Shawadi and excluded go to Einstein. Shawadi takes the lead, comes right away. Shawadi by a length excluded and exceptionally flies home. She might have grabbed third from Einstein and Sutton around and a photo finish there. Gatewood, well, Adrian, has it been an unluckier runner ever yeah, in Melbourne Spring than uh, than this horse, Gatewood? I certainly don't think that uh, Terry Henderson or Simon O'Donnell want, want to see that replay again. Uh, that was a tale of woe from the 800 metre mark. This horse could not get a run. Um, and even at the finish, he was still uh, charging home. Look, uh, all the form suggests that this was the horse on the up, lightly raced horse, got good form through Master Stroke, who ran third in the arc, um, small field. Uh, he can take up a position. I expect him to be uh, the one to beat. Well, he went up favourite, Gatewood, being displaced by the big plonk on Brigant. And exceptionally, what do you make of exceptionally? F- best form's always Flemington, but they're throwing the dice here to, to get two runs in before the Melbourne Cup. Well, exceptionally needs to win this race to sort of give it any chance of getting in the Cup. Its form's really good. Um, I'm just not sure if it's going to be a slowly run race. It's going to be out the back. Can it sprint over the top of the uh, Europeans and made lucky day? Question mark. Horse number six, this is Chateau Margot, who went to the uh, like night meeting at uh, Cram and won the Pinker Pinker plate over the Cox Plate trip. Chateau Margot stoked up a neck away. A length back, Innocent Lady trying to wind up as they dash for the cash. Then came Emblem of Liberty and Manila Jewel and Red Typhoon. Candela in front. Chateau Margot flat as a biscuit, but coming on strong on the outside. Favourite now draws alongside of Candela. Candela headed by Chateau Margot. Chateau Margot's got the head in front of Candela in an epic battle from Innocent Lady. She's too good Shadow Margot. Comes home and wins at a length Candela in a leader dominated race. Innocent Lady third Emblem I'm not sure the depth there today. but uh, One, progressive two, three, staying five. tight for Moody. Look indeed and uh, very authority with Cranbourne. Uh, it had the race under control in the home turn. One running away. Uh, massive jump up in class. Uh, that's my only query about uh, Shadow Margot. I think it could be the wildcard. It might be able to be tactically more uh, advantaged than the others. Well, look, it's going to probably race on the speed. May even may end up in front, and that's going to give it a, a huge chance. And horse number seven here is Back in Black, who ran in the uh, Cup last year, believe it or not. Uh, it did. Ran sixth in the Cup uh, last year, but form's not good enough. I think it's totally outclassed. It's not a factor at all. You go back over the international history and the horses have come here. Going back to Media Puzzle, that famous year of 2002, we've seen horses like Crime Scene run down the track and run second in the Melbourne Cup. Uh, Crime Scene ran fifth, comes out and runs second. This is a, a great race for the internationals. We've seen the past two years, American and Dunedin and both win the Geelong Cup, and guess what? They win the Melbourne Cup. Right, let's get your tips, Adrian, and uh, I've got mine thought out. I've been, I've been swamped by the plonk. Uh, what about you? What are you, what, Top three. Uh, top three, uh, in order, Gatewood to beat Malucky Day and Biggerton. I'm the other way around. I'm going with the plonk here. Number th- uh, three, Braganton to beat. To one, Malucky Day. And two, Taktra Broyson. Three, one and two. You'll see all the action on TV and celebrate your long cup day. You'll be out in the grounds with all the news as it happens. Yeah, look, it's, it's, it's always a fabulous day. And this year it's even a, a better day with the three international horses. Malucky Day, uh, a great race. Fantastic. We'll see you at the Geelong Cup, the Cenobet Geelong Cup.